Well, hello everyone and welcome back. I know it's been a while and happy spring to you. Spring has sprung and there's new life and new hope and the sun is shining. It's a wonderful time of year. And this time of year turns our thoughts towards growing things. Whether you're a farmer or you like to garden or maybe you just like to go for walks and enjoy life out in nature. It's this time of year that we start to think about things growing. Well, we're starting on a sermon series or actually a series of series in which we're going to focus on these things. Cultivating Contagious Christian Community. So for the next few weeks, we're going to look at cultivating and how does God want to use our lives to cultivate contagious Christian community and what is it that God is looking to cultivate in us? But before we get to that, I want to open with a word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us together, even though it is virtually Thank you for this opportunity to share your word and this message of hope and truth that you have laid on my heart. Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit would go and speak to each and every person who would hear this message and that you would help them to, to hear what it is that you're saying to them personally and to receive what it is that you want to pour into their lives. Father, I pray that you would fill me and use me. Lord, that the words of my mouth and meditations of my heart would be acceptable and pleasing in your sight. We commit this time to you. We commit ourselves to you. And we thank you that you care enough to speak to us because you want a relationship with us that is personal and real and deep. So thank you for this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, our scripture reading this morning is found in Matthew chapter 13, verses 1 through 9. So again, that's Matthew 13, verses 1 through 9. I'll read it for you now. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. And as he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it, it didn't have much soil. It sprang up quickly, but... The soil was shallow, and when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop, a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. This is the word of the Lord, and we give thanks to God this morning. Well, before I left to go out west for the month of February, which is why you haven't heard from me for a while, I was out visiting my kids, as most of you know. Before I left, there was a lot that I had to do around the house to get ready to go. And anyone who's been on a long trip knows what I'm talking about. I had to make sure that everything was absolutely clean. I mean, don't get me wrong, Rod is very good about keeping the house clean and looking after things, but I wanted to give him a good start at least. So I made sure everything was clean. I had to do a lot of meal prep. I had to make sure he had enough groceries. I had to make sure I had things written down that he needed to look after while I was gone. And one of those things is my house plants. Now, Rod's not a gardener by any stretch of the imagination. He has no experience living on a farm, but he has been amazing at learning how to care for my plants because he knows how important they are to me. 
Well, again, I want to make sure he has the best start possible. I don't want my plants dying on his watch and him thinking that he's done something catastrophic to kill them. So I looked at my plants and I thought, you know, there's a couple of them that really need to be repotted before I leave. Well, I took them out and found that, yes, they certainly did need to be repotted. They were quite root bound, actually. Well, this simple assignment of repotting a couple of plants that, that I knew were in need turned into a very large project with soil and pots and everything everywhere all over my kitchen floor. And next thing you knew, I had repotted almost all of my plants. And, and you need to understand, I have a lot of plants. It was a big job. The thing is, most of my plants looked quite healthy. They were alive. There was lots of growth, lots of green. They, they looked fine. But when I took them out of the pot, I realized that their roots were taking up most of the space. And if they were going to continue to grow and be healthy, I needed to increase the capacity that they had to grow. I needed to make sure that that the roots had room to, to be loose, to spread out, and that they had enough soil to get the nutrients that they needed. I was so thankful that I didn't just take it for granted that what I saw on the surface was a reflection of what was really going on. You see, undisturbed soil simply means that the farmer or the gardener is not at work. Sometimes we look at we look at open fields, we look at, at ground that has gone fallow, and we see that it's, it's, it's pristine, it's in its natural form. It's beautiful, just the way it is, we think, if we're not farmers. You see, fallow ground has the appearance of life, much like my houseplants did. But undisturbed soil means the farmer is not at work. It means that whatever is growing there is growing on hard packed ground. And like the, the plants that Jesus talked about, they can become easily scorched by the sun and, and quickly wither and die. Jesus used a lot of stories about farming to explain the truths of God's kingdom to people. He lived in a time and a place where a lot of people were farmers and the people who weren't farmers at least had enough of a connection to the land that they understood what farming was about and the importance of it. Much like the area that I live in now and many of you as well. See, nowadays we have people that, that don't understand farming and to the point where I've, I've noticed that farmers are now putting up signs but alongside their fields to tell people what is growing there. When I first saw it, I thought, that's ridiculous. Who doesn't know that's corn? Who doesn't know that that's soybeans? Well, apparently a lot of people. We've lost that connection. And so now you get more and more people who drive by these areas of fallow ground and say, oh, just leave it alone. It's perfect the way it is. It's natural. But a farmer looks at this patch of fallow ground and he sees its potential. He sees the potential for that patch of land to produce food, to feed a community even. But first, the ground has to be torn apart. Before you can grow anything in this piece of fallow ground, you have to rip out what's there. And even on farmland, this time of year, farmers know, what are you guys gearing up to do? to plow, right? Before you can plant seeds, before you can grow anything in that soil, the soil has to be plowed. It has to be tilled. It increases its capacity, just like with my host plants, just like God wants to do with us. Now, at first, this, this might seem cruel. The ground has to be torn up and, and other things have to be pulled out but ground that hasn't been plowed can't be planted. In fact, if it has gone fallow, it, it likely can't even 
receive rain. And the plants, the seeds won't receive sun and nutrients because fallow ground, the soil is hard packed and the rain just bounces right off of it. It's not healthy soil despite the outer appearances. No matter how beautiful these weeds and natural growth seems to be, it's useless. It doesn't produce fruit. It can't feed people. Not only that, the, the, the roots are shallow. The soil, as we said, isn't healthy. And if the land is to become useful for feeding people, it has to be plowed. It needs to be laid bare and made deep, open and vulnerable in order to receive the seeds, the water, the sunshine, and the nutrients, and in order to allow space for the roots to grow deep, to produce strong plants that will, that will grow and produce fruit, even a hundredfold. Jesus said that, that God is the farmer and our hearts and our lives are the soil. The seed is the word of God. It's the gospel, the good news of God's grace and forgiveness. He wants to plant the seed of the life of his son in our hearts so that that life will grow and bear fruit. From these seeds spring up life that is, is rooted in faith, that grows in obedience and produces fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, and self-control. All life was designed and created to be fruitful, to produce and reproduce fruit. And our lives are designed to produce fruit that would remain the fruit of the Spirit. And the fruit of the Spirit can only be realized in the context of relationship. It's all about love. You see, the problem is that many of us have allowed the soil of our hearts and lives to become fallow ground. What is it that leads land to become fallow? Primarily, it's, it hasn't been tended by the farmer. It's been left to its own devices. And when we are left to our own devices, when we stop responding to God's convicting spirit with repentance, when we aren't praying, when we're not feeding on the word, when we're not living in true Christian community, when we allow hurt, bitterness, unforgiveness, or the worries and cares of this life to harden our hearts, when we start to find life in other things, idols, Weeds and thorns begin to grow and our, our lives become that, that hard packed fallow ground. We become, like Jesus says elsewhere in the Bible, we become like whitewashed tombs. We might look beautiful on the outside, but inside we're, we're empty. The fallow ground of our lives becomes shallow and dry and hard and, and we're no longer open and yielded to the working hands of the farmer and our lives are not producing fruit. Well, God wants to increase our capacity. He has so much, so much that he wants to give us, so much that he wants to pour into us. But the only way he can do that is to break through the hardness of our hearts. He has to tear up the facade that we have on the surface, this shallow emptiness. Have you ever been to a groundbreaking ceremony? I know they're not as common as they once were, but, but you've probably seen one on television at least. And at least you have enough context to know what I'm talking about. Well, a groundbreaking ceremony is an event that involves making a sacred deposit in exchange for a solid, lasting foundation, thereby symbolically consecrating the building location. You see where I'm going with this? God 
wants to have a groundbreaking, groundbreaking ceremony in our lives. He wants to make that sacred deposit of his word and his spirit in our hearts that will create a lasting foundation, consecrating the building of our lives for him. He wants to be able to pour so much of himself into us that our lives will produce the fruit of the Spirit a hundredfold. That we will be disciples who make disciples who make disciples. That the love that we have for God and the love that he pours through us to others will produce the fruit of joy, peace, patience, kindness, and so on. He wants an intimate relationship with us, and he's calling us to have an intimate relationship with each other, not one that's just on the surface. We need to stop living these surface lives. He wants our roots to grow deep. It's, it's well and good to, to do things with people like getting together to play cards or, or go for lunch. And there's nothing wrong with that. But he wants our relationships to be much deeper than that. Much deeper. He wants us to be able to call each other when we're struggling and say, pray with me. Pray with me. He wants us to mourn with those who mourn to rejoice with those who rejoice. He wants us to encourage each other with songs and hymns and spiritual songs. This is in the Bible. That's, that's his plan for us. But in order for that to be possible, he has to, he has to break up that fallow ground. Our, our hearts and lives, the soil that is our hearts and lives needs to be laid bare, open, and vulnerable. It has to be yielded and workable. Now the plowing instruments that God uses to break up that soil in our lives are the truth of his word. It breaks through the lies that we've allowed ourselves to believe that, that create this barrier that we think is protecting us. But it's actually only keeping us from experiencing life and joy. He uses the conviction of the Holy Spirit to bring us to a place of repentance so that we can receive his forgiveness and grace instead of carrying around the burden of the, the rocks of, of guilt and shame. And he uses the love and grace of his son to draw us into relationship with himself and his family. International best-selling author Bryant McGill said, whatever makes you uncomfortable is your biggest opportunity for growth. Ouch, talk about plowing up the ground. I'm gonna say that again. Whatever makes you uncomfortable is your biggest opportunity for growth. God doesn't want our growth to be stunted. He doesn't want our lives to get root bound. He wants to increase our capacity to receive from him and to grow in him. Intimacy with God comes through openness, honesty, and vulnerability. Just think about that plowed, freshly plowed field. Everything is laid bare. It's vulnerable to all the elements. It's open, and that's how he wants our lives to be. Are you willing today to allow your heart and life to be laid bare, to be open, honest, and vulnerable with God today so that he can plant those seeds and pull out the weeds and pour out his spirit, the former and the latter rain, so that your life will have deep roots and be strong and bear fruit. Let's go to prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that, that you love us exactly the way we are. You, you look at our lives and you see the beauty, but you love us far too much to leave us that way because you also see the potential and you want to give us so much and you've designed us for so much more so much more no matter where we're at in our walk with you no matter where we're at in our lives you have so much more for us 
You said that you came to give us life and that abundantly. You want us to produce fruit, a hundredfold fruit that would remain. So Lord, we pray that you would do a work in us, that you would soften our hearts, that you would tear up the soil, that you would take out whatever is standing in the way, that you would increase our capacity to receive from you so that you could pour more of yourself into us and out through us to share that love and grace and mercy and truth and forgiveness with all those that you've placed in our lives. Father, help us to not hold anything back from you. To not try and keep that, that little patch of land for ourselves, but to surrender all that we are and have to you and trust you. Lord, being vulnerable and open and honest can be scary, but we pray that your love would take away all that fear, that we would trust in you knowing that you only want what is best for us and that we would come and allow you to do that work in our lives that would give us a deep, intimate relationship with you. We pray these things in Jesus' name with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Jeremiah 4 verse 3. This is what the Lord says. Plow up the hard ground of your hearts and do not waste your good seed among thorns. God bless you. I hope you have a wonderful week. And don't be afraid to come to God and allow him to break up that soil of your heart. I know it sounds a little scary, but it is so worth it. And next week, we will talk about the next step in the cultivating process. Until then, take care. God bless.